welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, and I am here with Sathya, whose name, whose last name I am not brave enough to pronounce. Can you help me out, Sathya? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sathya Kutimangalam, <laughs> but I don't blame you at all for not being able to pronounce it. <laughs> so you can find her over at uh, Zag Studios, which is hellozag.com. Um, and one of the things she helps entrepreneurs with is helping service-based entrepreneurs differentiate themselves in a crowded market. So tell us what that means to you. Okay, so when I started my business a few years back, I, I noticed that a lot of people who are in the service-based business space don't really know what to say about themselves beyond I am a web designer or I'm a coach or I'm a photographer, right? And the problem with that is that there are so many service providers in every single industry that if you don't know how to differentiate yourself, you're basically the same as everyone else. And just as it goes in business, a lot of people are looking to other entrepreneurs to see what they can imitate or how they can follow the, the crowd. So what ends up happening is that every single person has exactly the same business model. So there are people who are coming to you and saying, oh, I char charge $100 an hour. Um, tell me what you need. I'll put together a package for you. But the problem is that a lot of times your client actually does not know what they need they don't really know because they are not the expert in your industry, right? So they may guess and they may tell you a rough number and then you may come up with a package, but that doesn't really mean that you are helping out your client in the best possible way. So what I started realizing is that the most standard way in which somebody can differentiate themselves is by really innovating on their packages and the way they're offering their services because that is the most fundamental way in which you can stand out from the other people in your industry but also when you have something that's better, your clients obviously want to work with you over anybody else. So you get an advantage over your market as well. So yeah, it's been something that's evolved over time, but I've noticed that this works really well for my clients. So it's a mixture of service design as well as messaging to help them differentiate themselves. So give me an example, because let's, let's use the example of web designer. Let's say that there's you know, web designer A, B, C, and then your client. So how would you yeah. help your client dis distinguish themselves as a web designer? Right. So what I tell people, what I tell my clients when we first start working together is what is the biggest problem in your market from your client's perspective, right? Like what is that thing that really annoys the crap out of your clients when they look at your industry? And every industry has this, right? So for example, with the web design industry, the big problem is the timeline. So most web designers, for example, take at least six weeks to like 10 weeks to turn around a website design project. I was on a call with somebody just yesterday, actually, an incredible web design company. And I love their design and their work looks incredible. But when I stopped, was talking to them about their timeline, they were like, yeah, most of our projects take two and a half to three months. And can you imagine like it taking an entire quarter for a business to upgrade their website? Like, can you imagine how much time that they're losing on this and how many potential clients they're losing if they have a terrible website? So clearly in that market, the biggest problem is the t turnaround, right? So if a company can fix the turnaround, and I know a few companies who, who provide lightning fast turnaround, like within one week or within three days, if you can do that, you're obviously a better choice for a lot of people who value that time that they are spending in their business and who value the time to you know, upgrade their business quickly and start making more money, right? So I think it's very industry specific, but you really got to look at what are the main problems in your industry from your client's perspective. Yeah, that's great. And I think it's one of those things that not only does it distinguish you as, you know, an authority in your market, but I think you can command higher prices when Absolutely. you are seen as the authority. And then there's also like, I mean, if, if I'm a web designer and I can turn around a website in three days, that just means I can take on that many more design clients, right? Absolutely. So yeah. it's a win, 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 win. Yeah. All the yeah, way around. Absolutely. Yeah, but unfortunately, I feel like most service providers don't ever think about that because one, they're thinking, oh, I just need to comply to the industry standard. So if it's three months is the industry standard, then I just stick to three months. But really, who is that helping, right? Like if it's not helping your clients and it's not helping you, then what's the point of just following the norm and not benefiting anybody as a result of it? Right, right. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. I really, <laughs> yeah. I really like that. And I think that that's valuable, whether you're in a service-based industry or not, right? Finding, yeah. finding really what the pain point is in the market and really driving that home with, with a solution. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, so you have an interesting life and business. Um, you've really designed a business around your lifestyle and the lifestyle you want to lead. So tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I started my business in the first place because um, I mean, I always knew I wanted to start my own business. Uh, but when I was looking to build a company or when I started building a company, I wanted to be 100% certain that it will allow me to have the lifestyle that I want. So traveling is really important to me, obviously, and I, I love traveling all over the world. But also, uh, I want to be able to spend time with my family because my family lives in India. And I, when I had a job, the maximum amount of time that I could spend with them was about two weeks a year. Um, if that, I mean, that was, that was on the higher side, right? Like I couldn't spend any more than two weeks a year with them. But now, I, the way I have my business works, and most of my clients are remote, um, and they're totally comfortable working with me remotely, it means that I get to spend time with my family whenever I want, whether it means that they are visiting me in Singapore or I am able to go back. So yeah, I'm really grateful for the way I have structured it. But really, I don't think it was that challenging because the most important thing that you just have to do is create a system for you to find clients who are based all over the world and to find the people who are totally comfortable with working with you digitally. And I think more and more people are very comfortable. So once you have those two pieces nailed down, I think it's, it's very easy to manage all of that, all of the other details. Absolutely. And I think, you know, the visiting your parents twice, you know, two weeks a year, while that sounds okay, maybe like, but then you're also not vacationing anywhere else, right? You don't, exactly. yeah. all of your travel time is dedicated to going home and not seeing the world yeah. and exploring and going on adventures. Yeah, um, absolutely. So speaking of, you have quite an adventure coming up. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah, I'm going to be spending uh, two months in Europe. I was originally planning to spend three months, but I think it's going to get cut down to two months because my lease in Singapore is running, is ending. So I need to come back a little bit sooner. Uh, but yeah, I'm planning to be in Portugal, Italy and Croatia over two months and just traveling and running my business remotely. And I'm super excited about that. That's so amazing. Two, yeah. I mean, three months is great, but like two months is still... <laughs> It's not bad. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to no, cry about it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So, so tell me a little bit about, I know one of the challenges for you in, um, in, in making this trip overseas is, is making sure you have good Wi-Fi there. Yeah. It, how are you managing that as, when you go? I mean, honestly, I, I am a little bit scared about that because in some parts of Europe, it's actually, it's so funny because Asia, many parts of Asia have amazing internet. So for example, like Hong Kong, Korea and Singapore and, and Japan as well, they have really good internet. So I am used to really good, fast, amazing Wi-Fi, but I know that there are many places in Europe where that's not the case. And especially in Italy, like if you are visiting smaller towns and smaller villages, it is possible. So I, is it possible that the Wi-Fi is not amazing? So I am either preparing myself to not have too many calls when I'm likely to be in those cities, or I mean, I'm pretty sure I can just get a SIM card with enough 4G on it so I can just use my phone as a router. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty, it's just figure outable. Yeah, it's figure outable. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I, I feel like that it's figure outable motto is the, when you're traveling, you just have to have it, right? Like yeah. you're going to have to figure some stuff out along the way. Absolutely. And I've been, I've traveled a lot. I've, I've been to 20 countries, most of them like backpacking by myself. So wow. yeah, so it's been like, a, it's been quite an adventure. But then again, like, because I've traveled so much, I'm, I know what, what the deal is, right? Like, I know what to do when I'm in sticky situations, or you just make it work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the reasons travel is such a such an amazing life-changing experience because we do have to just figure stuff out as we go right there's just no there's no manual there's no like telling what's gonna come up when it comes up and it just yeah makes us better people so absolutely yeah and especially traveling alone because when you travel with somebody else uh, there's a big chance that you'll just depend on them for everything right like you just have conversations with what this one person you go out to dinner all the time with them or whatever but when you're traveling by yourself, you're just opening yourself up to just so many more opportunities and adventures um, and options for how, what you want to do with your day and all of that. So absolutely. Like I think traveling alone is one of my favorite things to do in life. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Well, Satya, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, if, if you guys are interested in checking her out, go to hellozag.com. Um, she is over at Zag Studios. And just tell us a little bit about, um, give us your spiel about what you do real fast. All right. So Zag Studios is a brand strategy and copywriting studio. And we work with service-based businesses who want to raise their rates, level up their brand, and get more of their ideal clients really quickly. 
So if you want to have a better brand and a better website in one week, come talk to me. I'll help you set it all up. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I was lovely speaking with you. Mm-hmm.